Well, welcome to Math 451. This is our introduction to numerical methods. Uh, this quarter, we are going to culminate all of the math classes you've had under OIT into one big umbrella that will take advantage of those methods as applied to numerical techniques. The reason we're doing that is because many problems, in fact, maybe most problems in mathematics cannot be solved analytically, but they can be solved numerically with precise stable algorithms that replace uh, the more formal, formulaic solutions that you've had in the past. So let's take a look at our course logistics. Uh, this video will just cover how we're going to run the course. We'll talk about our schedule, our media, what text we're using, how we'll do grading, what the expectations are, and other rules of the road and other details. So first of all, let's start with an introduction. My name is Tom Bingham. I was formerly the manager of the Applied Statistics Group within BRNT's math modeling organization. The entire course will be run by YouTube and email. So you'll not come in physically for a course at all during quarter, but the YouTubes are comprehensive. We'll talk more about that later. Your textbook is called Numerical Mathematics and Computing. It's by uh, Ward Cheney and David Kincaid. Uh, please get it right away because sometimes it takes a week or two to, to get that. Just get on to Amazon.com or wherever else you would like and order the book. Uh, get the seventh edition when you do. MATLAB is also required. I'm assuming you probably already have it. Uh, because you've had to take Engineering 266, but if you don't, you can uh, download it from the link that I've provided, and you also uh, should be able to get it alone without Simulink now, I'm told. Uh, it used to be $99 for the combined set. We don't need Simulink in this course, so you can just get MATLAB. So let's take, talk about the content of the course. We're obviously going to talk about numbers. We'll do a little history and where they came from and how they're used today particularly how they're used in floating point numbers and integer arithmetic. Uh, and we'll also look at the importance of the Taylor expansion and how it was developed from the mean value theorem. The Taylor theorem will be instru instrumental in this course. We'll also learn to solve linear equations. Now you may at this point say, why do I need numerical techniques for that? I can solve any uh, linear system using matrix algebra. You can, but try it using 10 variables or 15. It's just too cumbersome. Uh, most of the problems we have in practical uh, engineering applications are looking at dozens, if not thousands, and in some cases, even hundreds of thousands of variables. So we need a computing solution to that. We'll also uh, look at nonlinear systems, particularly forming roots of nonlinear systems, and we'll need uh, numerical methods to do that because many of those can't be solved without numerical methods. We'll enhance what you know about interpolation, moving from linear interpolation to higher order interpolation. We'll look at numeric differentiation and integration. We'll find that those nasty integrals that you couldn't do when you, take it, when you were taking calculus, now you can. And the numerical derivatives will have a lot of use in forming differential equations, numerical differential equations, which, like integrals, often can't be solved either without numerical methods. As far as your prerequisites are concerned, uh, they're listed there. You really should have had all your math classes and Engineering 266 before you take this class. Uh, you can take statistics later, but it would really be best if you had all of them. Now, your course attendance will be done through the video lectures. There are three sets of them, we'll talk about them later, but the main list are the lectures themselves. There are problem solving videos as well. Uh, if you've got other questions, we can correspond by email back and forth individually. The online lecture links that you will be getting will come in multiple forms. The first is through a print of an Excel form. I'm going to give you a, a view of what that looks like here just in a minute. But other ones are going to come in the form of redefinition of problems, hints for those problems, and solutions to those problems. They will be sent to you in a piecemeal manner as the homework becomes uh, due or as it's assigned. Uh, so, so the lectures themselves will be on a file that is a PDF version of a, of a uh, Excel file. And you can see on the left here the dates which these are due. So they get started fairly quickly and they run quickly. But they're not too long. They, they're all under 15 minutes in length. 
And all you'll have to do when you get this file is click these links and it will come right up in YouTube and play it for you. So it should be pretty easy to get to it. Obviously the list is a lot longer than that, uh, but that gives you an idea of how it goes. Now off to the right, you can't see real well are check marks where homework is assigned in the videos themselves. So that will you, you will see that better when I send you the PDF. Your homework and your exams and your grading is all related. The homework is the basis for everything. Uh, it's worth 30% of your grade, so get it done for that reason alone. But it is also the basis for which the midterms and the finals have been written. So don't, uh, don't ignore the homework or you won't do well in the class. There are 24 of these homework assignments that cover the duration of the class. Again, as we indicated earlier, you may, uh, you may collaborate as, as much as you want, except don't just copy people's codes. You can look at it, uh, but please write your own. But when it comes to the midterm and finals, uh, those will be uh, take home, but you must do those individually. The, the homeworks uh, vary in difficulty uh, based on the assignment and also based on how familiar you are with computing. So you should look at two to four hours in length per assignment. Uh, it may seem like a lot. That's in addition to viewing the videos. But this is a 400 level class and it does reflect that. The hints videos will speed this up a bit if you pay careful attention to that. And as we indicated earlier, you have to have your homeworks in on the day that the homework is due. Late work is not accepted. It says except without prior permission from the instructor, and I'm very unlikely to give uh, prior permission unless it's truly a life-threatening emergency. Work-related conflicts aren't good enough because you can do this offline and you should be able to get the homework done. As far as your assignments and grading requirements, again, you can collaborate, but do not copy. Write your own script. Your homework assignments are published in the lecture videos, but they may be redefined in additional videos I send you for every homework that is assigned. Some of the homeworks have been modified and improved, so make sure you check that. That same video will have hints on how to get it accomplished. Don't send me emails saying, I don't know how to do this. That won't work. You're going to have to work amongst yourself for troubleshooting. There will be plenty of it to do. Uh, many of the assignments, particularly in Chapter 2, are cumulative, meaning you work one assignment, and the second one is simply an edit of the first. So you'll take a copy of the first assignment and edit the copy to make some sort of required change, and then you'll edit it again for another third copy. So make sure you understand each assignment before you move on. And then when the uh, homework is finally due on the following day, I send you another link and it has a complete description of how to work that video in case you just couldn't quite get it completed because there was something about it that was bugging you, just didn't work. Now there are some coding rules. You cannot use MATLAB functions. Now you might say, why? MATLAB has a wealth of functions that would help a lot. And that's true, and a lot of other software packages do too. But we're trying to learn this method, not just copy what somebody else has done for us. So if you end up having to solve a linear system and you do it by using the backslash key in, in MATLAB, uh, you're not going to get credit for that. When you said co send code in to me, it has to be a .m file. So as you can see down here, you give me some nice name that I can identify with. Use the name that's in the homework assignment so I can, I can uh, assign it easily. Don't give me some other funny name that I'm going to have to work at to figure out which one you're turning in. And the MATLAB M files must run. You can't send me uh, programs that fail and have syntactical problems. If they get the wrong answer, that's the way it goes. But they, you cannot come back with a syntax error. And also, your other homework can, will be submitted through PDF files. And don't give me a whole big long list of PDF files, one for problem. Put them together. Most, most uh, copy machines can create PDF files, so it shouldn't be uh, too hard. So. Okay, as far as the rules of the game are concerned, again, get me the homework by the deadline. Your solutions videos are going to be on the heels of the deadline. And if you don't turn it in or if it just simply doesn't run, then that is going to be a zero and that will affect your grade. This is a complete list of all the homework assignments and their due dates. So the due dates run across the top. The red uh, labeling is for 
uh, midterms and finals, and these are all the names of the homeworks with the codes that we just referred to on the prior page. I'll give you a PDF of that, which will be easier to use. So the grading criteria for your executable scripts will depend on how precise your numbers are, meaning how many uh, significant digits you were able to achieve. Uh, did you get good computational speed? Did you uh, have a lot of memory usage or little memory usage? Little is better than a lot. Uh, how well did you comment your code? And I've got examples of what I'm expecting. And how well did you indent logical groupings like if statements, while statements, and for statements? For your other homework, it's mostly mathematical development. Does each step successfully logically move to the following one? It doesn't, I don't want to have a bunch of little chicken scratch and things all over the place, but it should follow very precisely. And you'll get graded for all of this, and your final grades are the standard OIT uh, percentages, which are listed there. Again, this is just a reminder for getting MATLAB. It costs $99 with Simulink. You don't need Simulink, and I'm told for $49 you can get MATLAB by itself. If you already have it, that's fine. And that's uh, as far as we'll go today. This ends your first of your 52 videos. And good luck. Send me an email if you have any other questions.